I don't have anything to say, and I assured you that if you don't have anything to say, start doing a video by telling people. I don't have anything to say. And I don't... Gaza. I don't really have anything to talk about. I mean, Gaza. You know, Gaza. Why is it so difficult to look at a camera? It's not difficult to look at a camera. I'm looking at a camera, I'm talking to you. And it's getting a little out of control in Gaza. The Gaza Strip. I just read this article of this guy who, for all intents and purposes, seems like he gave up. Talking about putting a gun in his mouth. And uh, then at the end of the article, you know, it's, it's got kind of a light note like, well, I'm not, I haven't totally given up yet, so I'm not going to put the gun in my mouth. But talking about how, you know, what's, what's, What's wrong with society right now? The music sucks. The movies suck. Corporations are just running roughshod over all over the government and the people. I feel like I've stepped back a level of consciousness to interact with people because I was so ahead of the game consciously that I was. It looked like I was behind. You know, if you lap someone, then it looks like you're behind them. That's how I felt. Like uh, I was way far, and people were like, "What the fuck's wrong with you?" I was struggling in my relationships. Couldn't hold down a relationship. Uh, my friends had ostracized me more or less, and uh, I felt crazy. But I know that magic is real. Magnetics, consciousness is a cloud of plasma. Uh, you know, some people still think there's three kinds of matter: solid, liquid, and gas. And there's a fourth kind called plasma, which is a cloud of fucking electrons. And that's consciousness, man. It's the electrons inhibiting or actuating the matter. That's real. And it's connected, like in a cloud, like in our fucking atmosphere, in our sun. Our sun is a bunch of electrons. Huge amounts of plasma in our sun. You want to think where God is. Talk about God. God is a conglomeration of energy. And it could be everywhere, which most likely it is flowing through everything, but it's also hyper accentuated at points like the sun or the center of the galaxy and the star cluster, even in the earth and in the body, in the human body, these energy points, these psychic macuations. I've been doing a lot of lemon in my water. It's very good. We went on a walk today, I walked around New York City. It did smell like garbage and feces, but not the whole time. I laugh because I'm like, what am I doing in a city that I think smells like shit? I left Los Angeles because of the smell, to be honest. It smelled like crap. I felt like I was getting headaches from all the carbon emissions, so I moved to Ohio for a year, cleared my head, and uh, it really did clear my head, but I was bored in that small town working at a restaurant, which I'm not particularly fond of. Now I'm working part-time with this video game company and occasionally part-time with mines. And although the money is not what I want it to be, I want to make a lot more money to pay these exorbitant fees of living in New York City. Um, I've had a clearer mind. And it's like, I've cleared out my mind just in time to see the fucking chaos. Like, this Israeli junction is, is nuts. It's racist bigotry militarized. It's terrifying. And where's Warren smash fucking screaming at about it? Where, you know, I, am I supposed to fucking scream? I don't want to scream, but I kind of do want to scream, but I don't want to fake it. You know, bring it out. I just ate a bowl of pasta with garlic and red chili peppers in it. So I can feel it in my stomach. You know, part of revolting is being hungry. If they keep us fed, if this society, this this white Western, it's not even white, this, this capitalist society wants to keep its people fed with these genetically modified corns and whatever, because when your stomach's full, it's hard to generate energy from your 
Dun Chi, whatever you want to call it, your fucking core, where this generates this massive energy flux, is blocked by all the shit in your stomach. And I've noticed, you know, I'll give it like 12 hours of not eating, and then I take like a huge shit and just ready to go. And I'm, I've got energy, and I'm ready to perpetuate. Screaming at a webcam, man, it's going to get you so far. And that's a good place to get it so far. But screaming at a piece of plastic doesn't make a lot of sense. It's like maybe you're better off writing a script and being the guy that screams in the movie just so people can see you fucking losing it rather than actually losing it at someone. Because you don't deserve that. I, I wouldn't want to scream at you. If I knew you even in person, even if I didn't like you, I probably wouldn't want to scream at you. Doesn't mean I don't want to generate it. Hate is a powerful tool. Rage. You know, I play a lot of video games. and In some games you have magic and rage. And they work together. Well, they work separately, but they both evoke. And warriors tend to use rage, whereas magicians use magic, mana, whatever they draw from the essence, the water, the energy clouds and things. But rage comes from within. Rage is a human thing, I think. Does a bear rage when it get ups and get ups and screams? Is that rage? Is it? It's not just a human thing. Rage is animal, man. You know, from a different level, magic and rage are the same kind of thing. We're just using energy in different ways. But it's okay to rage. Just don't. Destroy people when you do it. <laughs> Don't destroy people when you do it. That's funny when you tell people, "Don't do this thing." It's like, yeah, you said "don't" before, but then you also said "do this thing." And if someone wants to fucking edit that out, and they just see you say "do this thing," so don't. You know, I've tried like um, this is part of of my crazy that that made me kind of isolated from people. Is I tried to stop saying "don't." yell at that person. You know, if someone was yelling, I'd be like, don't yell at that person. I tried to stop myself from doing that because I, I knew that they were hearing don't, but then they'd hear yell at that person and it would cause it to get angry. Like, so I would stop myself from doing that. I'd be like, you're calm. And they would awkwardly look at me like I was some crazy person, but inevitably, you know, more or less, they, they would become calm. It definitely works. It's just a weird transition into a new evolution of human No one's black and no one's white. And this is when really I, I felt like I hit this this wall with people. When I, I realized no one is black and no one is white. There are no white humans and there are no black humans. Yet the words are so easily used that people tend to use, seem to use them to the point where I'm like, can't find anyone that will live in this reality with me where there is no black and white human. I went to Occupy Wall Street and I screamed in front of the crowd no one is black. No one is white. And they were just stunned, silent, looking at me. And then, you know, 20 minutes go by and this girl picks up the, the microphone or whatever. No, she doesn't have the microphone, but she gets her moment to speak. And she's like, well, I am a black person. And I'm like, you, you can go so far and do so much. But if you don't have the stability or, or the backing, like the group behind you that shouts your name and agrees with you or something, it's, it's, you gotta let people catch up to it slowly. You can make hyper extensive observations about reality, but you know, people have been doing that since the dawn of time and they're ostracized. Some people were like incarcerated for proposing that the earth was round or, you know, God knows beheaded because of some truth that the king didn't realize or whatever. So there's a, there's a fine line to it, but it's like to the point almost where I'm like, dude, fuck it. Throw me in a, throw me on the, on the fucking martyr seat. If you're going to, at least you'll listen to what I say. As long as you listen to what I say, 
and realize it and change your life accordingly, does it really matter if I live or die? I want to live. I would love to live till I'm 80, 90, 190, 180 and watch young children grow up and inspire youth through the years. That's what I want. But it's not worth living in a society that is incarcerated. It's not, I'm not, I don't want to watch people be in a prison for the next 80 years just so that I can get 80 more years. The balance, you know, the signs tell me to create a piece of art that pushes it over the edge. Maybe write a song or record a, a, a musical thing or an instrument or, or a, a movie, you know? I mean, this is a kind of movie, but, you know, do a, do a, a great fluctuating piece of rhetoric that stands the test of time. Isn't that what this is after all? Man, we have access to these video cameras and this internet where one person can say something and 90 million people can hear it. And then Twitter blows up and it goes on BuzzFeed and Wells Fargo and Minds.com and who's the one I was really thinking about? Uh, Huffington Post does a blog on it. Then you're there. At least for a moment. You just gotta keep it up. Just gotta keep it up, man. Keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing when it works. Because it's working. It's working. We're doing it together. Whether or not we see each other, we're still doing it together. So thank you for being there with me.